big sticky brown rice and the recipe that you have right there in front of you. And then as I'm standing here cutting and talking, it is much easier than walking and chewing gum. If you're uncomfortable about slicing avocados this way, you don't have to. I'm just used to cutting myself a lot. So trying to cut sodium in Japanese food can be really challenging. The average Japanese person takes 10 to 20 grams of sodium a day. Average American consumes about, oh, anywhere between three and nine grams. Cutting the sodium that much was uh, pretty challenging to try to get the flavors that people enjoy out of uh, traditional Japanese food. It can be done. How many of you made sushi before? Five, six, seven, seven of you? How many of you like sushi? Okay, good. So while I'm waiting for Danny, I'll go ahead and switch over to the miso soup. I've got my water. I'm gonna bring it up to a boil. It comes to a boil. I got uh, katsu dashi. You can get it in a pre-pack. And you can find this at an Asian market. Uh, there's three of them here in town, and they'll likely carry this katsudashi. And I went with this because it doesn't have MSG in it. I know some people may have sensitivities to MSG. And also, it's uh, they come in these handy little packets, so I don't have to strain it off. Some of them, they come loose. And what it's got in it is it's got so two different kinds of seaweed, and then this has shiitake mushrooms in it, and then it's got those little tiny dried fishes. Have you ever been to an Asian market and seen those little, have you ever eaten them? They're delicious. They're absolutely delicious. So I've got my water boiling. I'm throwing in my katsudashi. Katsudashi. And I'm just gonna bring that up to a boil and let it simmer for a few minutes. I have my miso. I went ahead and got uh, Hawaiian style sweet miso instead of, there's uh, red and there's blue. There's lots of different types of miso. I got the Hawaiian because it's much lower in sodium so the sodium on this Hawaiian style, this uh, Kyoto white miso is, uh, this is 140 milligrams of sodium. Your typical, uh, your typical miso paste will have about anywhere between 300 and 500 milligrams. For your pleasure, we're going to add to this two tablespoons of miso. How much water? It's eight cups. My stock is coming along pretty well. Very nearly done. You can smell that, the dried fish. Let go. And then, I'm slowly heating up that miso and mixing in just a little bit of broth. I wanna make sure there aren't any chunks in there. I've got that full flavor right there. Turn that down so that it's no longer boiling. Like I said, you can buy each of these ingredients individually. There's tons of recipes on site. We want to make sure that it's not boiling. Then we're going to add our miso paste in. going to let those flavors kind of meld. Now while those flavors are coming together and marrying, I start setting up the bowls. Little cubes of tofu. And there you go. You got yourself
a little miso. That's our first bowl. Since Bruce was my lovely assistant before class, your recipes are out in front, and we will uh, get started. So come on up. And then go ahead and grab a quarter of an avocado. I'll grab this for you. Get it all put in there nice and neat. And then I like sesame seeds a lot, so I'm going to do a little bit more. All right. And then from here, I'm going to take a little cucumber. Line it up. Probably pretty good. Don't overload it. And then I'm going to get my avocado. Pull it out. so it's more photogenic. How about that? That's fantastic. Is that your first one that you ever rolled before? Okay. I can tell you have experience too. The full sheet, right? Our white rice wasn't quite sticky enough. by making it 
sticky fur. So, I'm going to go a half a cup of just rice vinegar. And then a third a cup granulated sugar. I'm going to heat this up. Throwing in this bowl, I've got one cup of mayo, quarter cup of sugar, and a quarter cup of rice vinegar. I whisk until it's well blended. And then this is your substitute for Japanese mayonnaise. If you want, you can buy some Japanese mayonnaise at, again, an Asian food store. We want to whisk this until everything is nicely dissolved. It looks pretty well dissolved. <clears throat> and it doesn't have that gritty feel. Our, our spicy mayo, here we go. It's at two tablespoons. I don't really go off of volume on this when I make it at home. I go off of color and smell. And that, my friends, is spicy mayo. You may want to ensure that you're getting a lot of magnesium and potassium. So if you are going to have salty foods, make sure they're salty vegetables. That's where you get your potassium and magnesium from. 
And then that way you get your electrolytes taken care of the little extra greens for more calcium. Yeah. <laughs> Fancy, you know, have the hospital. Uh, there's one. Uh,